Hi, I'm Beth. And this is my tiny house. I grew up around water, and I can never be too far from an ocean. Lakes are great, but I need the ocean. It's just, it's a different kind of energy, and I'm drawn to it. I'm born and raised in New York, but now live part-time on the Oregon coast in beautiful Walport, um, which is part of an amazing coastline that belongs to everybody. Uh, and I live in tiny tranquility. It's a wonderful, tiny home community. Uh, I think there's 34 homes here now, uh, probably about 40 people in total. All of them really nice. Everybody's very friendly. We get along pretty good. It's a beautiful spot. The, the lots are big, so it's not, you're not on top of each other. Uh, there's six acres that I get to overlook every morning. Uh, the just open field and beautiful evergreen trees. And I, I'm, I'm really happy being here. We have some nature trails that we're working on off, uh, on the back of the property, um, which are gonna be really cool. So, and that's what I love to do is hike and kayak and paddleboard and crab and anything outdoors. So this is a perfect spot for me. So my builder is Trueform. They're a great company. I, I would recommend them for the detail that they put into a build. I styled it after a craftsman design uh, and the builder and, the, and designer are actually husband and wife. And she made some great suggestions on little details uh, that change to the, the look of the house. So originally it was supposed to be those clapboard style all the way across. And she, she suggested this board and batten to mix up the styles. At first I was like, oh, I don't know, because I like the strict look of Craftsman. She put together a picture, I took a look at it, I was like, she's spot on, it's perfect. And then she also added these cedar corbels on each part of the house and the cedar shake on the little peak, which gave it a further like Craftsman feel. So I really appreciated that. So why don't you guys come on in? I want to show you my tiny house from the inside. So welcome inside. So my tiny house is 24 feet long by eight feet wide, about 250 square feet with the loft. You can see this is my downstairs bed. It's like a day bed. It's where I spend most of my evenings. Also good for guests, good seating. The storage loft, the ladder to which is stored right up in here. Really convenient, you just drop it down and hide it away when you don't need it. I have my big comfy chair, which I love. It fits, you know, it's a tiny house, but it's a great chair. I thought about doing a bench seat over the wheel well, um, and there wasn't anything that really quite fit. So I was thinking about doing a custom thing. I'm like, but then it's fixed and you can't really move it. So I said, and I saw this chair. I had a shop up the street. I was like, ooh, that's a comfy chair. <laughs> I think I need a comfy chair instead. So that's what I went with and it matches my colors. So I added this drop down table because it just fits in the space so well. Nice and centered under the window. Got the saddle chairs. Here's lunch and dinner. <laughs> and reading and doing whatever. You know, it's good for guests. I have a piece of stained glass here that was made by a friend of mine on Long Island. Um, that's what she does as a hobby. It's actually turning into a job for her. Uh, and most of the things in the house are either a gift or something that somebody has made for me. Personally, I have a little painting of a bird up on the wall that was painted by a friend of mine in New York. And also the blinds that I chose, so they go up and down. So you can have privacy this way, but still have a lot of light coming in. So I would highly recommend that option for anybody. There's tons of storage in this tiny house. Underneath my bed, which is actually a really cool um, foam mattress, which is so comfy. Got all this draw space. Goes all the way back under the bed. Super tucked away. Then behind on the headboard is additional storage. You can just flip it up and you can fit everything in there. All my bedding goes in there, so it's out of the way. And I have a wonderful view of the dog park. See the dogs come and go and, you know, I have the best space on the, in the park, I think, because I have all that acreage out there 
and all this space right here. So I feel like I'm really in the wilderness. You know, it's cool. Storage up in the loft, plenty of room. If you had a kid staying over, a family, I'd fit at least two kids up there, no problem. When I have guests come over, obviously you have the big comfy chair and the saddle chairs, but also you have a nice day bed. You can sit and hang out. I could fit six people comfortably in my living room. Living room. <laughs> I'm an acupuncturist. So I have a full practice in New York. I really only work three days a week, which is nice. And I'm licensed in Oregon, but I don't really do much here. I try to be on vacation while I'm here. <laughs> I split my time probably like 60-40, uh, between New York 60-40% here. Uh, I follow the weather. <laughs> you know, when it's good on the coast, it's great on the coast. Long Island tends to be hot and humid in the summer, so 65 and sunny and cool is perfect here. If I go east in the winter, I get to ski, which actually I could ski here. It's not too far away. Yeah, I spend a lot of my time on the water there, too. Um, it's great from, I would say, April to October to get out on the water in Long Island. Uh, it's cooler, obviously, in the fall and the spring, which makes it more appealing to be there than here. You know, we get a lot of rain here in the winter, so that can be a little bit of a buzzkill. You don't get to go outside so much. And Tiny, I don't know. Uh, it's a long story on how I got to, to Tiny, uh, but I wanted a vacation spot somewhere. I thought about doing an RV <clears throat> and getting to travel around a lot, but something about it just didn't fit for me. And then I came upon the tiny idea. I was like, wow, that could definitely work. And I could definitely pick it up and move it if I wanted to, not realizing that this place was so cool that <laughs> I could just park it here and never move again and be okay with that and just travel around in, in a car or my van. and and see the rest of it, which is what I do. So I'm, I'm, I'm living the dream, it's pretty good. Okay, so now we're entering into the kitchen area. Um, I've got my beautiful farm sink, which can handle a lot of dishes. Um, I don't have a dishwasher, because I am the dishwasher. <laughs> Lovely fixtures that Trueform put into the house design. Got lots of storage underneath the sink. Got plenty of storage underneath the stairs and I have this lovely extra pull-out counter space. Washer-dryer combo which is a preferred method in the tiny. Lots of counter space here and I love my stove. It's pretty full size. I can probably fit like a 12-15 pound turkey in there if I really wanted to. Got the glass backsplash design which is it was a little bit pricey, but I just loved the look of it, so I went for it. Shelves that just appeared magically after the build happened. I was like, how cool is that? It's perfect. And storage galore. Pantry shelves. More up here. I keep some wine in here, a microwave and a toaster. There's power in there, so it works out perfectly. My cute little oven mitts. Storage for all your dishware. Deep, deep drawers for all pots and pans. Silverware. I mean, how much do you really need? Except for four people. And this closet, which houses the hot water heater. I kind of made it into a hanging clothes closet. That's the one thing that's kind of missing in a tiny house is you don't have a closet closet. But there was enough space that I could adjust the shelves and fit towels up top. Anything that I want to hang there, it works. <laughs> fridge, which is a pretty good sized fridge. Really good sized freezer. So I have no problem storing stuff. And again, more storage. So the bathroom is modest, it's tight. Got this wonderful pocket door. Just disappears when you don't need it. Got a nice sink. Got a lovely 
floating mirror that turns into something you don't want to look at. <laughs> and uh, I added a nice medicine cabinet with some frosted glass, which keeps everything neat and out of the way. Shower is a decent size, 32 inches, I believe. And just really all you need. I'm not a bathtub person. I like the shower. So this all works and fits. And I added a little plant for some color. I have a real toilet that's hooked into the septic. I opted to do that because I've had experience with composting toilets. And well, <clears throat> they're a great feature if you're traveling, so it's a lot easier. When you're here for a long period of time, that gets kind of tedious. So I like the flush toilet. I know there were a lot of tiny house builders around. And so the first one that I interviewed with them and then three others thinking, let me see what people have to offer. You know, there's a lot of builders around and I wanted it to be a, an Oregon or California builder so that it wouldn't have to travel so far. All the interviews went well, but I got stood up by one company and it wound up being the company that I chose to do the build. So um, I gave them a second chance at the interview and they were so apologetic. They were like, I don't know what happened. It was, it was fine. And I really got to know them a little bit and they're great. Jed is a great builder. His wife, Joanna, was a great designer. She made some detailed changes, which I really loved and kind of also affirmed the changes that I was putting in as we went along. So they're a great company, Trueform and they did this build for me. It's just a beautiful finished product. There's every detail it was really carefully thought out. So I, I love the company. I have stairs that go up to the loft. I chose stairs because they're a little easier to negotiate, especially like in the middle of the night. You don't want to be working with a ladder. And as you get older, you may want to have stairs instead of a ladder. Um, nice design feature, they did these railings that are just blend well, the mixed uh, materials, the wood with the, the metal. And also I chose half a bookshelf to give some space separation between the loft and the downstairs. So if I have a guest staying over, they have like a little bit of privacy. Uh, it seems to work. So let's go upstairs. Got a lot of headroom. I mean, obviously you can't stand up in the loft but it's enough where I can sit. Uh, half a bookshelf, half railing, give a little flow so it's not so closed off, but it does have a little separation. Keep my hydro pack up here. Again, a little bit more hook storage for clothing. And this landing piece, which is comfy. And sit here, look out the windows, see the beautiful field. I got a nice uh, super high density foam tuft and needle bed up here. Beautiful sconces that True Form put in. These big uh, oil rub bronze. White is nice, but you have too much white. It's, it seems to be overpowering. I have this type of ceiling in another home in New York. I like the look of it. I like the knotty pine uh, and it matched the trim on the windows. So again, more design flow. I mainly sleep downstairs in the big bed but um, sometimes in the winter it gets a little cool and it's much warmer up in the loft. So to get a different perspective, I'll sleep in the loft. And I wake up in the morning, you can see the sunrise over the field, which is beautiful. Sometimes you get lucky and get some deer coming through the field. And it's really cozy up here. So if I want to change a pace, I'm up in the loft. But I also, um, I'm lucky that I didn't have to downsize a tremendous amount of stuff because I have a thousand square foot house in Long Island, which is huge. When I get back to that, I'm like, wow, I got to clean all this? <laughs> Where it takes 15 minutes to clean a tiny house. It's, it's pretty awesome. Well, I've had it since November of 18, so coming up on three years. And I've, I've learned space is not everything. You know, you can definitely work with a smaller space very comfortably. You know, some of my friends back east said, oh my God, how many square feet is it? 250. I could never live in that. You really would be surprised how much you really need. I think about a large house and how often you spend time in each room of that house. You're in the kitchen, you're in your hangout space, and in your bedroom. And that's 
pretty much where you spend most of your time, right? So that's all I have. That's all I really need. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Patreon for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.